we manufacture these things. These are wearable video cameras, um, often referred to as point of view cameras, um, onboard cameras, or action cameras. Um, this is a relatively new. This is a relatively new category, uh, which has exploded over the last four to five years. Uh, what's really driven growth in this uh, wearable video camera category is it was a number of factors. Initially, it was people who were interested in capturing their own experiences. People into action sports. People who enjoyed um, skiing, snowboarding, mountain biking, who wanted to capture their experiences. But what's really gri uh, driven growth in this uh, action camera market is the rise of social media. People, the uh, websites like Facebook, YouTube. Uh, and the like, where it's provided a platform for people to actually share the content that they produce. And uh, another trend has been advances in technology, where the technology has become cheaper, and companies like Drift have been making dedicated equipment like this for people to actually capture and share their own experiences. If I talk a little bit about Drift, we're a UK company. Uh, we were launched in 2009. Uh, we design the cameras in the UK and we manufacture them in China and we distribute them all over the world. We distribute into about 30, 30 countries worldwide. We work with a number of production companies, including we've worked uh, with, the, with the BBC and a lot of the major brands including uh, Red Bull Formula One team. We've won a number of international design awards for our cameras and uh, we regularly come top in a lot of independent reviews when uh, uh, authors are doing reviews of this category. About 80% of our revenue is through export, and that's been pretty much the case since we first, first launched. So what I wanted to do was just show some of my experiences in, uh, in, in export. So one of the first obstacles, it wasn't an obvious one, but when I was putting the put, putting together the presentation, one of the key, the key things you've really got to think about when you're thinking about exporting is actually your pricing strategy. Because often if you're just working in a particular market, you've got a particular pricing strategy for that market. But when we develop products, one of the first things that we have to do is think about the price points in different countries. Uh, and, and that's for a number of reasons. Because if we're working in different countries, we probably have to work through partners. They could be agents or distributors. And one of the things that we have to be mindful of when we're thinking about exporting is the price point. For example, we have to focus on our margin. If we're exporting into a particular country, we obviously have to make a particular margin that's you know, for our business. But we also have to think about partners. If we're working with distributors, for example, um, they will have their own margin requirements. And if those distributors then selling to retailers, they, they themselves will have their own uh, margin requirement. So if you get the pricing wrong in a particular territory, there's a couple of things that can happen. One, it may be that you're not actually making any money, which isn't obviously a good thing. And the other is if the partner, if you're not able to provide the partner with any margin, he's not going to be incentivized to actually sell your product in that particular territory. And so you really have to have a clear pricing strategy when you're actually moving into other countries. Pricing has also got an important, um, is very important because if you get it wrong, there can be a lot of uh, unforeseen consequences. And especially for us, because obviously we're in the, with, with the cameras that we, that we produce, it's, it's very much a consumer electronic. And in consumer electronics, you can have challenges around gray market. And what that means is, you can, if you start selling to lots of different distributors around the world, you, they are incentivized to actually sell your hardware in those, excuse me, they're incentivized to sell their hardware in those particular territories. But what can sometimes happen if you have the wrong partner, what, what they, or if you have the wrong pricing strategy, I should say, is people, uh, distributors will start moving product from one territory to another. And then that, what normally happens is in America, your pricing strategy is often very different to Europe. And in America, often you sell much more volume, but your pricing is slightly slower, lower in the US. And what can often happen is products can move from the US, distributors in America can start 
moving it through into Europe, and that actually undermines your distribution model in different countries, and that can be a really big problem, especially when you're working with distributors in particular countries to try and build your brand in a particular territory, when, you, when you've got gray markets are actually disrupting the market, and it can make it very, very difficult when you're actually trying to build a business in a particular, uh, particular territory. So pricing is something that you really have to think about before you even start moving into a country. The other challenge, and there's a myriad of, myriad of them, is a lot of regulatory hurdles. Some, if I just, I'm just, there's, there's lots of them. I just wanted to pick out a few for, uh, for examples. One is just internal paperwork that you have to do for the government. It's extremely frustrating, and it adds no value to you as a business. But if you don't do it, you can get fined, which is a frustration. So these are things like interest, that, and EC sales lists. So when you're moving, this is, this is particular concern if you're selling within Europe, if you're exporting within Europe, you have to basically provide reports on a regular basis in terms of what products you're moving around and what the commodity codes of each of those are. The other things that you have to consider when moving into other countries is some of the the regulations and certifications that you need for different territories. Uh, for example, the cameras that we produce contain Wi-Fi. And so if you want to, in many of the countries that we, we distribute to, for example, America, uh, Australia, uh, Japan, Brazil, lots of different territories, what you need to do is you need to get Wi-Fi, you need to get a certification to sell these, to sell these products. And that's just a lot of time-consuming paperwork, and it actually costs lots of money. So, for example, if you want to sell into, like, into Dubai, for example, I've got a case study on this uh, later, it can be about five, $6,000 you have to spend just on Wi-Fi certification. Uh, other challenges that you have are around, especially hardware, chances are it contains batteries or lithium batteries. And we have, we've had significant problems ourselves in shipping lithium, lithium batteries. In the, because there's been a uh, recent, there's been a, uh, it was in the news, and it, there's been a, um, some problems with basically lithium, lithium batteries uh, setting on fire in transit on airplanes and on ships. So the regulations around those are really tightened. So if you actually want to move anything around either by ship or by air, there's a whole myriad of paperwork that you actually need in order to to actually move the batteries. And this can, and so this is and this is and then this can actually add a lot of cost to ex, uh, when you export. In terms of import duties can be a problem depending on the territory. So for example, South America in particular has got extremely high tariffs and import duties, which can make it very problematic when you actually want to try and sell the product into a country and actually price it such that it's competitive or affordable to people in the local market. And one of the things that we are to, one of the things that we've done in with in relation to countries where there's high import duties is that we've actually avoided those in the short term. We're actually we focus much more of our attention when it comes to export in countries where it's actually easier to do business and there are less issues around duties and tariffs and uh, things like that. So we focus more on America, Australia, and Europe. So I guess the take-home message for us when we were, while we're exporting is you've really got to do your research. If there's a particular territory that you want to export to, there's probably a whole myriad of paperwork that you have to do and regulations that you have to adhere to. So it's just a question of doing your research first. Otherwise, if you find out during the process, it can add a lot of time and, and, and expense to the process. Uh, what I wanted to do was just give an example, and this is uh, Dubai. So we started to sell uh, in Dubai last year, and this was one of the more complicated territories that we actually sold into. One of the first things you have to do to sell product into a country is you actually have to register your logo in that particular country, and that actually requires the, the help of uh, international lawyers to actually help you with the process. Once you've actually registered the logo in that country, you also have to communicate with the government to confirm that the, that the distributor you're working with is officially allowed to bring products into the country. And once you've done that, you also have to uh, prove that every item 
that, you that you're importing into the country is produced on your behalf. So for example, with the cameras, it's relatively simple because we make these, and, but we still have to have documentation from the government which, which proves that the products are actually made on our behalf and we have the right to sell these uh, um, products in, that, in, in Dubai. But also, every accessory that we might sell, we sell a lot of accessories, and some of these, for example, might just be a spare battery, for example. We have to, every individual item, we have to confirm with the government that, we, that it's made on our behalf, and we've, we're able to sell it into that country. In addition to the Wi-Fi certification I talked about earlier, just all those things combined, just to sell into Dubai before we've actually sold a single camera can cost about 10,000 US dollars. And then there are other complications or other things that you actually need to do when exporting to countries like in, in the Middle East. You have to translate all your paperwork into Arabic. It sounds like a little thing, but it's just one of those things that adds additional cost in terms of get, getting all your... Um, all your user guides, all your manuals, uh, manuals translated into local languages. And then once you've actually done that, and then with this particular example selling into Dubai, it's then a question of how you get paid and what the payment terms are. So in Dubai, we work with a letter of credit. And these can be extremely complicated. There's a lot of um, detail that you have to adhere to on letters of credit and anything if you do if you if you get anything slightly wrong it can actually delay payment which obviously impacts cash flow if you if if there are issues so countries like dubai is probably one of the more onerous examples but just gives you an example of some of the additional costs that you actually have to incur when exporting to countries countries like that One of the other challenges when exporting hardware is actually trying to work out what your model is, how you're, how you, what is your channel in that particular market. And there are lots of different things you can do. You can, you can try and sell direct. You can work with agents. You can work with distributors. You can try and identify local retailers and work directly with those retailers. And then if you talk about distributors, for example, you can try and find big distributors, small distributors. There's so many different options that you can do. And across the world, we've tried, we've, we've, effect, we've tried all these different models. So, and what we found, there is, no one, there is no one model that works in all the different territories. So if we just take um, working with a distributor, which is what we do, which is one of the main ways we, we sell. The thought is, if you work with a big distributor, someone who's got uh, a big... A big network works with, works with a number of different brands and works with a lot of different retailers. Do you think that would be a great option of working in a country? Because they've already they've got the financial resources, and they've also got the um, they've got the financial resources and the, and, and the network from day one. But the problem sometimes with big distributors is they've got all that. They work with a lot of different brands, and if you're a relatively new brand, they don't necessarily give your brand the focus. They obviously you yourself think it deserves. And sometimes they may take the product and hope it just sells itself. Well, where they themselves should be investing. And sometimes what you find is if you actually work with small distributors, these could be you know, two or three people, and if, they, and if they are focused on no other brands and they're just focused on your, your brand, sometimes they can be much more successful than working with some of the bigger brands, so with some of the bigger distributors. Other things that we've tried is that we've tried to set up our own office in the US. We um, set up an office and built a team, but the challenge is there is that you have to manage these teams uh, a long way away, and that can be very, very difficult in terms of the management and the costs associated with hiring your own staff and building your own teams and setting up offices in different com countries can be very, very expensive. So our our model, we've kind of stepped away from that. So our model is invariably work with distributors in different countries. And as I say, they can vary from small to big depending on the territory. And often what we try and do is we try and focus on identifying key retailers in a particular region. So if there's a key retailer that we want to build a direct relationship with, we normally target those. And some of the smaller accounts we work with, with through distributors. One of the the 
key things that we've found when working with distributors is you need to have clear agreements with them in terms of what your expectations are of them in terms of volumes, sales, sales effort, marketing effort. And one of the things that we've learned pretty much through trial and error is that you not to be afraid to change. If, if a relationship isn't working, you shouldn't be afraid to, to make a change. In terms of once you've actually found a distributor, one of the other difficulties is actually making it work with that distributor. Because what we found is, obviously it's, not, it's never easy to sell, but once you have found a, a customer, a distributor in a particular territory, it's often the first sale is the easiest sale. But what then becomes the challenge is actually trying to make that relationship uh, work longer term. So you can give them the, you, can, you, got, you sell them the, you know, the first shipment of stock, but you've actually got to work actively with them to, to try and help your partner sell that stock through and build the brand in that territory. And what we found is the more you actually work with a partner, the more you invest time in developing a relationship, the, uh, the more you spend time visiting them, the more you just kind of sharing your knowledge experience of what's happening in other territories, the more engaged that your partner is in that particular territory and the more successful you are in that territory. And so some, with some of our most successful partners, we're actually able to leverage a lot of what good stuff they do in their territory and actually apply that uh, to other, other markets and share that knowledge with other distributors that we work with in those different countries. There are, there are a lot of other things I can talk about in terms of some of the challenges this, uh, in terms of um, in terms of exporting hardware. But I think I just wanted to focus it on those three really, just in terms of when you're, when you're exporting, the first thing you want to focus on is get your pricing right. Really understand the regulations and all the paperwork that you need to do in advance. Find the right distribution partner, and then you've really got to make it work with that partner in that territory.